coach spring practices done did you uh feel like you got done what you you wanted to get done i do yeah i'm i'm, I'm pretty encouraged um by how we finished up and where we're at i think certainly you know we've got a ways to go um like you like you always feel after spring ball but i think we made a lot of progress uh, on both sides of the ball I was, was really pleased you know, with the progress we made on offense specifically, you know, considering the fact that it's a, it's a new offense uh, going against um, a defense that, that, that shows a lot of things. I thought Drew, Drew did a great job of, you know, with an installation plan and, and um, sticking to it as much as he possibly could, but, but, but not getting too far ahead of himself. And, and so we got a good amount of our offense in. I think the, the players have, have, have worked really hard and they, they grasp what we're doing. I think it makes a lot of sense to them. And, um, the encouraging thing for me was to see, you know, a lot of really good back and forth uh, during spring. A lot of times, you know, since I got here, in 19, the, the spring's kind of been dominated by 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 the defense, and uh, that wasn't necessarily the case this spring. So we're really encouraged um, about where we're at. You know, having said that, we, we certainly have a ways to go, uh, as we should at this point. But but pleased with progress and, and where we're at. <clears throat> Over the course of this the spring, did you feel like the, the defense enjoyed the challenge of, of facing something new and unusual that they hadn't really seen before? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's, it's been really good for us defensively uh, to see all the things that, that we're seeing, uh, some things that, that carry over um, to some of the opponents we'll see in the fall and some things very specific to what we do that we won't see a lot of, but maybe uh, a lot of it, you know, the other two academies do. So it was it was a good mix. Uh, of seeing both and, and really good for our defense to see all that stuff. So as you start <clears throat> for fall, what's your schedule look like between now and then? Um, well, the next couple of weeks, our guys are they're lifting weights. Uh, they're finishing up school here. We've got our zero block. You know, the month of June, we'll, we'll really take advantage of that. We'll do some OTAs. We'll have six opportunities, you know, to have, have coach-led practices. Uh, so excited about, you know, Excited about that piece of it. They'll continue on what we've built on, you know, this spring. Uh, get, as you get into July, uh, those practices are, are player-led, uh, really getting after it with Coach Caritzi. Um, so they're, they get a little bit of time, but but not a ton. And, uh, you know, I think last year, I think our players would tell you they probably didn't take advantage of June the way they should. And, and June's a good time around here for some of these guys. You know, they don't, they don't have a ton going on. Uh, but certainly not going to be a vacation this June for our guys. I know that, I understand it. I think our guys are really hungry. Uh, they they can smell and sense how close we are uh, to turning the corner here. And, and um, so, yeah, June will be, be big uh, as well as July. And, and I'm just looking forward to continue to build on what we've done up to this point and, and make sure we don't take a step backwards. And uh, when we get back together in June, those guys hit the ground running. Well, thanks, Coach. <clears throat> Muted, Scott. Sorry about that. Scott Wyckoff. Hey, Coach, what was it about Landon Robinson that impressed you the most with the improvement in the spring? We know how well he played coming in for Biscuit last season. What was it that he took it up another notch here in the spring? Yeah. You know, the thing about Landon, he's so consistent um, in, in the way that he works, the way that he comes to practice. Um, I think – the, the thing that is impressive about him is is his football IQ has improved so much. I think he, he really understands what we're doing, why we're doing it. He knows what's going on around him. And he's becoming that three-dimensional player that we talk a little bit about around here. Um, and he's he's one of those guys that his work ethic is relentless. You know, he, he invests uh, in himself, you know, not just when he's over here in the building or in the weight room, but – uh, when he's got time on his own, he's a guy that's watching the film. You know, he's a guy that's uh, getting in the weight room as often as he can. And so uh, he's just continued to get stronger and bigger and faster. And, and I think the football IQ piece of that uh, has been the biggest, um, the thing that he's improved on the most. Uh, and you really see that starting to pay off on the field. I think you look at uh, Biscuit and played a lot of snaps for us. I mean, he was a, a really, really savvy player. Um, it's one of the things that really allowed him to survive in there as an undersized player. When you look at Landon, I think he's, he's got those same characteristics. Football is important to him. He, he loves the game. He studies it. 
Um, he's a smart player. Uh, he feels really comfortable with, with what we're doing. He just continues to get better and better. I really couldn't be more impressed with the things that he's done and where he's at right now. Really, really excited about Landon. <clears throat> what does it mean for you to be able to uh, move Coach Hall to a coordinator status? Yeah, it's big. I think Coach Hall doesn't get enough credit uh, for all that, that he does and has done since he's been here. Uh, he's done a tremendous job, you know, with, with our D line. And you look at that room over the years, you know, he's taken guys from different position groups. Uh, he's taken undersized guys and, and turned them into really, really good players. And uh, I think he's as, as good of a D line coach as I've been around. Um, as good of a technical coach, uh, gets his kids to play extremely hard. I think, you know, you go back to 19, you know, our, our D line really getting the heart and soul uh, of our defense, you know, on a consistent basis. And uh, just, Opportunity to reward him and give him some extra responsibility uh, was important to me, and, and uh, he he really deserves it. Uh, how do you like the new terminology, the snipes? You know, we were all calling them the slot backs, but uh, now there's the snipes, and it seems like the guys have really embraced that. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, David Cole's done a phenomenal job since he's been here and really cultivating that room and, and taking a lot of pride in it, uh, and his unit, his position group. and. I like that. I like that term. It gives it a little bit of flavor. Those guys taking some pride in it, and uh, really, really pleased with the job he's done, and I'm really pleased with the guys in, in that room and the way they, they went about spring ball. And um, it's, it's been a good, good spring for those guys. Thanks, Coach. Wags. With regard to <clears throat> Coach Hall, um, you know, I twice this spring, Coach Volker unsolicited. I asked him about defensive linemen in particular and before he even answered the question about the linemen I was asking about he wanted to talk about how what a great job coach Hall does of developing his unit um so I think on that level is obviously a reason to bestow the new title but I'm also thinking perhaps there's other schools that would be interested in hiring a standout defensive line coach like a Jarek Hall sure I don't I don't see why they wouldn't you know I think he's a guy that could coach anywhere in the country. There's no doubt about that. I think we're uh, we're lucky to have him. Um, I do know that he loves this place and, and loves the guys that he coaches, and and uh, I hope we can keep him around here for a long time. So you talked about Landon Robinson. That's one of four positions that you have to fill on the de defensive side of the ball as far as starters. Mm -hmm. um, defensive tackle. Do you feel as good about Kendall Whiteside as you do about Landon in terms of replacing Clay Cromwell there? Yeah, I think you what, Clay Cromwell was one of our best players, and, and he's going to be really, really hard to replace when he gave us a three technique. I don't think people really understood you know, how valuable he was, uh, valuable he was for our football team. Um, but I've, I've been super impressed uh, with Kendall. I think he's had a really, really great spring. I think uh, Tyler and Ryan's had a, a really, really good spring too. Uh, both those guys kind of changed their bodies, and I think Kendall gives us some things athletically that, 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 that Clay – um, this is some things athletically that maybe Clay couldn't even do in regards to rushing the quarterback and things like that athletically. Uh, and I think he's a sturdy guy too. And he's going to hold up in the run game well. And, and um, he's he, he could make the case he could be one of the most improved players, you know, coming out of spring ball. But uh, we're really good about our D line right now. Uh, I think you know in the past we haven't had great depth. When you look at our D line right now, I mean we're too deep. Uh, and there's a couple of the younger players that we could add um, value, you know, as depth players and, and, and take potential snaps in the fall for us too. So really excited about the development of our defensive line and the way we recruited at that position. And, and uh, large credit of that is due to Coach Hall um, and, and, you know, what he's looking for on the D-line and, and the way he's recruited that position. So really pleased with the D-line and actually feel like we've got some depth. You know, you like to play a lot of guys at, the, at that position. I think this, this year we'll, we'll be able to do that, keep guys fresh. What about at striker where you're losing <clears throat> your top players in Xavier McDonald and Naevin Gibbons? Yeah. Yeah, I think Jackson Campbell's had an excellent spring. Uh, he was a guy that we moved, you know, from wide receiver to safety and then from safety to striker. Uh, really kind of come into his own um, throughout spring. A really talented player. Um, was really learning the system. Um, this last fall, and, um, there were times where he was he was undisciplined, uh, a lot of eye violations, things like that. And he, he's become a much more disciplined player, uh, plays with, with the kind of eat that we talk about around here. 
plays with the chip on his shoulder, plays extremely hard, and is really talented. So really pleased, you know, with his progress. Uh, we got a couple of the guys that, that did some good things this spring too. You know, moving Jay Sean McLean from from high safety to striker. He's a big long kid that that um, has really flashed at times. Um, uh, Riley Bergson, you know, same thing. Uh, really pleased with some of the things that he's done. Uh, you know, Kenny McShann didn't go through spring ball. Um, we're going we're going to try him out at striker. He's He's a really dynamic linebacker for us. He's, he's probably 205, 208 right now, maybe better suited to play out there at, at striker, a guy that can run and hit. So uh, we've, we've got, certainly got some capable bodies there. And, and uh, coming out of spring, Jackson was, was a clear number one for us right now. But, um, you know, like we always say, that we're interested around here every day. You're always trying to uh, earn that spot. So I know he'll, he'll have a great summer and continue to get better. And at the Mike linebacker spot where you lose Will Harbor, I was kind of assuming that that would be Johnny Woods and Brooks's job to uh, to lose. But I was I talked to Coach Volker, and he said that Job Grant has really stepped up, and they're actually playing Johnny Woods and Brooks at the uh, Sam behind Colin Ramos. Uh, what are you seeing out of Job Grant? He's a guy that's kind of coming out of nowhere. Yeah, well, Johnny's playing Will, um, not Sam, not Striker for us, but. Yeah, Joe Joe Grant's been one of the biggest um, pluses coming out of spring as well. I, I keep saying it, we've had a lot of really a lot of guys really step up this spring, but uh, he's a uh, he started out at will and moving to Mike. I think you know maybe the second week of practice uh, to get the best guys on the field. And you know Joe is uh, he's six two, two hundred twenty five pounds and, and can can fly. And um, you know playing linebacker was new to him. Uh, some of the instinctual stuff, making the reads in the box are new, uh, but I thought he handled it really, really well. Uh, he's he's a really special talent. You know, we don't get guys like him um, from a size perspective, athletic ability perspective, that come to the academy very often. He's got a chance to be a really exceptional player, a linebacker, and he's got the ability to play both Mike and Will. Uh, but really, really pleased with, with Job. I'll pass it along to Pete Metters. Thanks. <clears throat> Go ahead, Pete. No guarantee I'm the next guy in line, but thank you. Um, it, Brian, just talking about a guy like Grant right there, uh, because contact, full contact, scrimmaging is so limited now, how do you how do you delineate that line for a guy that looks great against air, looks great mm -hmm. in drills, um, and then does translate into the limited amount of contact uh, that you're able to have, uh, not only at this time, but obviously coming up in the fall as well? Yeah, I think we were able to see what we need to see, you know, from that perspective with 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 our guys. You know, we did, we didn't go live this spring as much as we did the previous spring, um, not because I didn't want to, uh, but because some of the weather conditions didn't, didn't really allow it. But you know, Pete, when we go, when we're thud. I mean, it's it's we we try to stay off the ground, but it's it's pretty much live. I mean, you can tell the guys that play with physicality and those things. You know, the what you really want to see is the guy's ability to tackle. Uh, in space and do those things, but we, we got enough live work in. Uh, you know, one thing we have not done around here a ton is is inside run period. With Drew coming aboard, that's something we were able to do, and we call that our CIC period. And that's a really physical period. You know, it's inside run. Um, you know, he's he showed that he's got that physicality. You know, in the way he defeats blocks from linemen coming up the field, and, and um, you know, his ability to tackle. He's, he's shown that as well. It is a, a spring period for a second year in a row where you have installation, significant installation going mm -hmm. on. Um, how do you and the staff uh, moderate, you know, obviously individual improvement is incredibly important at this yeah. time, but obviously installation is as well. How do you come to grips with how much you do one or the other to make sure you get as much work in as you, as you, yeah. as you do as staff? <laughs> it's a little bit of a tricky deal, you know, especially when you're installing a new offense and, you know, we're all competitive. Um, but we make sure, you know, before we get into spring ball, we talk about, you know, what are our objectives? What are we trying to get accomplished? Uh, and knowing that there's going to be some, some give and take. Uh, you know, we do a lot of things defensively. You know, with the stem in our front, you know, multiple fronts, the movement, all those things. And so there's a time and a place where, you, you know, uh, you know, we're not a static football team, but time and a place where you, you got to be static, you know. And you guys just got to take on blocks and beat blocks and, uh, which you, you got to get in the basics uh, and, and, you know, the fundamentals and the nature of what we do defensively. Sometimes that's hard, especially when you're installing a new offense. And, 
And so there's there's some give and take there in, in what we did on both sides of the ball. It's, you know, you don't want to handcuff what we're doing defensively and, and slow things down for the sake of the offense, but you, you have to do that a little bit. Um, but for the most part, you know, we did what we do on defense uh, for the majority of the spring. You know, there's bits and pieces in practice where we, we may be a little more static uh, so the offense can, can, can see something and, and get a look at something. Um, but, you know, to, to Drew and those credit, man, we we got a lot installed uh, versus a lot of different things. And, and while that creates a, some problems in the spring for the offense, I think it's, it's going to pay dividends in the long run. I think, you know, what they're going to see moving forward is going to be really easy compared to what they saw in the spring. Uh, so it was good. You know, I think you're, you're talking about, you know, P.J. Volker and, and Drew Chronic, two guys that don't have an ego. They understand we're, we're, we're trying to make our football team better. It's not about – um, Coach Chronic versus Coach Volker in practice. Uh, that's never been the case, and, and they understand that. And I thought we got a lot of good work done. And I thought we uh, made each other better on both sides of the football this spring. In our conversations with Coach <clears throat> Brown, they both remarked about how giving guys opportunity on special teams, um, you know, for some guys, it's the first way for them to get on the field. Mm-hmm. For a guy like Landon Robinson that em- embraced special teams uh, to get on the field and obviously was able to blossom into a, a contributor on the defensive line and now hopefully a starter uh, this year. How how much do you hold a guy up like that to the rest of the team and say, hey, you know, when we say something like this, this is what it's all about is this is a path that this guy took and he's turning into a, a, a big contributor for us now. Yeah, that's obviously what we talk about all the time around here. You know, your, your tick, especially as a young player, um, is is to make some noise uh, on special teams. You know, we, we put a big emphasis on special teams in, in the spring. You know, Coach Brown does a draft and break those guys up into teams and we do some really competitive drills. You, know, you guys were out at any of our practices. These guys take a lot of pride in it. And uh, again, Coach Brown's done a phenomenal job and and our guys know I mean that's that's the ticket you want to get on the bus. Um you make a difference on special teams. And the other thing is, you know, our our starters, you know, the guys that are playing on offensive defense take a ton of pride in being part of those units as well. And uh, Really, anybody who starts for us uh, should, should should be at least a one or two special unit, uh, special teams guy. So, uh, but Landon's a great example of that. You know, D Lyman, I think he's the only one, only those guard in the country running down on kickoff. I don't know if he's going to run down on kickoff this year. You know, <laughs> being a starter, he's missing that season, he's going to play on defense. But, um, you know, it's just, you know, we got to see all guys who just want to want to win games and, and are willing to do whatever it takes to do that. And, you know, it, it all starts on special teams. Uh, behalf of the group, forgive me for the fourth question, but I want to follow up there. Ricky talked about that. Uh, with <laughs> do you find about guys' competitive traits in things like that? Uh, you know, when they set up in situations that divide up into teams like that, do you find out about some competitive traits about some guys to see how they want to compete, uh, even in situations like that? Yeah, there's, there's no question. I mean, uh, Coach Brown evaluated every single snap and every competitive drill that, that we did uh, and we, we don't we don't control the reps in those in those drills that we did so it's interesting to see guys that hop in there uh, we had a rep count you know there's certain guys that you don't want to be on those teams they're going to jump in there and get as many reps as they can and, and uh, but just another opportunity for, for us to see those guys compete you know doing different things with different skill sets and so it's a great evaluation tool uh, for us certainly thank you appreciate it Thanks, Pete. All right, we'll take uh, another trip around. Uh, Mike James. Uh, just one question for me, Coach. Just how does the uh, the team look coming out of the spring health-wise? Pretty good. You, you always have, you know, two or three things that happen. And, um, but, you know, for the most part, we're healthy. Um, as healthy as we've ever been coming out of a, a spring, Mike, that answers your question. You know, th- there's always a few guys, and we try to do everything we can to prevent that, obviously. But. There's, there's work that you have to get done, and there's obviously risk in that. And we try to be smart about how we do it, but there's things that we have to get done, and, and that, you know, those injuries are inevitable. Thanks, Coach. Scott Wyckoff. Coach, what was your biggest takeaway from the <clears throat> freshman class that uh, kind of learned, got a firsthand look into the fall, what it was to be a college football player, and now kind of putting that into play on the field and practice in the spring? Yeah, it's always a big learning curve, you know, for those guys. Um, 
certain guys that, that get it, understand what the standard is, and there's other guys that, that, are, that are learning it as they go. And, you know, it's, it's hard to play as a freshman here. So this is really some of these guys' first opportunities to, to really get reps and get coached. And, um, but been really pleased with the freshman class and the way they approach it for the most part. Um, it's a process for those guys. You know, they're, most of those guys, are. it's enough to know what they're supposed to do, much less what the guy next to is doing and what we're trying to do defensively, what, what's the intent of play on both sides of the football. And, and, and it's for the big picture stuff. Those, just, those guys need tons and tons of reps. And the spring is the time to do that. But they've been, been really pleased with a lot of those guys. And for you, this in the sixth season, do you notice a difference on the field in what you see with a, a full cycle, a true cycle of recruiting that you've been able to do with your staff getting especially players on defense that are kind of uh, in your mindset? Absolutely. You know, we've had some continuity, you know, on the defense side of the football. And there's, you know, very specific profiles that we're looking for in each position. Uh, you know, obviously with the, the changes on offense, that's changed, you know. Um, you know, Drew's there's a different profile moving forward, you know, based on what we do offensively. And so, you know, that's something that we're going to have to develop. I, mean, I think we've done a really good job recruiting. You know, of course, the last year, I think that's, you know, the, the unfortunate thing about recruiting is you don't see immediate results. Those things take time, you know, to see the fruit of, of your labor. But I think we've, we've, we're doing some things differently. Uh, I mean, our, our staff's recruiting really hard. We're, we're being uh, you know, a little more selective about the guys that we're offering, uh, being more diligent about, you know, are they our kind of guy, you know, they're smart, tough, low football, they have the intangibles. I think the one thing that's got the portals allowing us to do right now is, is really to recruit a higher caliber player coming out of high school. You know, those guys are getting as many opportunities. You know, in the past, you know, we have to go out of the profile that we're looking for uh, more than you like to do, probably. And I think you know, now we're not doing that, so we're sticking to our guns in regards to that. A little more, a little more selective about the guys we take, and you know, that's something that's going to pay off on the road. Thanks, coach. Thanks, Scott. Wags. Do you feel good about your quarterbacks coming out of the spring? You feel that like Braxton Woodson and Blake Horvath can get the job done? I do. Uh, I think we've won both those guys and been really, really pleased with the progress. Um, I mean, coming out of spring, you know, uh, Blake's in the driver's seat. Um, I think he's, he's managed the offense really well. He has a great progress with what we're doing. I think his body has changed in the offseason. Um, I think he's playing with some confidence. I think he's throwing the ball well. He's making good decisions, protecting the football. I think Braxton is an exceptional talent. He's made progress as well. Um, you see him make plays out there, and you're like, holy cow. And, uh, he's just got to keep coming along, and, and he will. And they're both smart um, you know, athletically, what they, what they can do with their feet. Um, and they both have good arms, but they, they can – do the things we need to do in this offense to have success. And so really excited about their progress. Uh, excited to see how they continue to develop, you know, throughout the summer. But really, really pleased with those two guys. In terms of offensive line, Coach Chronic had said that it was probably most difficult on them learning the new offense because they have to adjust. It's a different than what they did mm -hmm. in the triple option. They're not, you know, they're in pass – protection mode more often they line up a little bit differently how did you feel the offensive line made that adjustment made really good progress especially if you consider you know all the things we do defensively and, and putting a new offense and, and changing up some of the technique and the fundamentals and things that we're asking those guys to do now um you know it's a unit where we've got to establish some depth uh, certainly we've we, we got to continue to make progress there we have a great summer we got to get stronger and bigger. Uh, you know, the good thing is we got six guys coming back that have played snaps for us. Um, you know, the challenge now is, is finding and establishing some depth. You know, all them just continue to get better. There's some talented young players, uh, but we got a ways to go with some of those guys that we don't need to come along. Um, it's hard to stay healthy, you know, front as, as, as we saw last year. And so we have to establish better depth moving forward on the line, but I'm, I'm pleased with the progress of that group, too. Um, I, I love the way that Jake and Tommy coach those guys. and uh, you, you can see the progress throughout spring, and their confidence starts to grow, and, and uh, we'll continue to get better there. 
<clears throat> at the two positions where you need to replace starters, would it be fair to say that Trey Cummings at left tackle and uh, Hoke Smith at right guard are probably the leaders in the clubhouse coming out of spring? Yeah, I think, you know, Hoke's running the second group right now. And Ben Purvis is, is a starter coming out of spring. And both those guys have some really good things. And uh, so we're going to need to hope uh, to continue to come along and play for us. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a freshman. You know, but he's done some really good things and it's a big upside. <clears throat> when I was out of practice, Eli Heidenreich was making plays left and right every practice I was attended. Um, so I, I know you know what you got there. Do you see, who else did you see skill position wise that was making plays? And I know you're a thin receiver and you don't have some yeah. of your best receivers out there. So you probably, you know, there's the jury's still out on that position, but, you know, yeah. like, you know, Chapman, the the two fullbacks. I mean, what else? Who else showed you something? Yeah, I think we got a lot of guys that can can make plays when you get the ball in their hands. Obviously, Chapman's one of those guys. You guys saw that in the fall. Eli's had a, a really good spring. Um, you know, I, Isaiah Bryant uh, was a guy that really really flashed a lot this spring. I think him and, him and uh, Chapman are similar type players, but he did a lot of really good things. Obviously, Tasca and uh, Taba. And have the ability uh, to move Tesco around to do some different things with him. It's something I know Drew's going to want to do in the fall. Uh, I'm excited about William Engel to uh, be back and do some really good things. You know, through spring, he took a bunch of reps at quarterback as well. Um, but, you know, his primary focus is going to be on beat back, and, and I'm really encouraged by what I saw from him. If he'll continue to go along where he is, and that allows us to do some different things, you know, with Alex. Um, so, we certainly have a lot of guys that can make plays. And, and, uh, and uh, guys that we're going to need to put in position and touch it for sure. Well, you answered my last question. I was going to ask you about William Engel because that was an oddball thing, him taking snaps at quarterback and D-back. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Bert. Pete, finish us off. Brian, just one follow-up for me. Uh, you know, today we saw an NBA player get banned for life. Uh, over the last year, we've seen college basketball and college baseball affected um, you know, by the gambling conversation. I know you have a tremendous compliance officer in Loretta Lamar, but as a program, how much time, if at all, do you have to spend on the gambling conversation just to remind guys that uh, there are pitfalls out there, just be aware uh, of things like that? And obviously I know the honor code means something a little different at the Naval Academy, but how much time as a program do you have to spend on that? Not, not much, to be honest with you, Pete. It's not it's something we obviously have to address. And hit, make sure you guys understand. It's something you'll hit in the spring or hit again in the fall, and, and um, like we do a lot of things. Um, but it, it's truthfully not something I worry about a whole lot with our guys. But you certainly have to address it, make them aware of it, and uh, it needs to be discussed and talked about. It, no doubt. 